Now, OpenAI's GPT-4 Vision API means that developers can build tools that can now see and interpret images. And today we're gonna to push that a bit further and use the GPT-4 Vision API to interpret videos. So we're gonna open up a brand new Jupyter Notebook and get to it, cool. So the first thing we're gonna do is just rename our file and we'll call that GPT-4V video. And next we'll install our dependencies. So there's three main libraries that we wanna install. That's OpenCV Python, OpenAI, and Pillow. Between them, that will allow us to manipulate images, play with videos, and make use of OpenAI's API. And as you can see, I've already got all of that installed. So next, we can import the libraries. Now, I like to import all of my libraries up front. So don't worry about what each of them do individually just yet, but we will come onto each one as we make use of them. And next, we can set up our initial parameters. So one thing we need is a video, and we'll be using this six second video of someone playing mini golf, missing the putt, and then jumping into the water. Cool. It's a nice short video and we're gonna make GPT-4 interpret it and tell us what's going on. So we'll create a data folder and we'll store it in here. Sweet. And then what we'll do is we'll set up that path. Now there's a few more parameters, but let me quickly explain what we're trying to do. You see conceptually, a video consists of two main parts. On one side of the spectrum, you have audio. On the other side of the spectrum, you have the visuals. Now the visuals that we're actually seeing are really just a ton of images. Really it's just hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of images just running one after the other, which is determined by the number of frames per second and the length of your video. But for today's purposes, we'll ignore the audio and focus on the images. Now there's one more issue, running every single image through the API is actually quite expensive. And so what we're gonna do is rather than running every single image, is run every nth image. So imagine we did something like this instead where we skipped all the red frames and only took every third frame. Other things we can also do are things like resizing the images and using GPT-4 Vision's detail parameter to reduce the cost by reducing the quality of the image. And with that, we can add in the rest of the original parameters. And so by setting the nth frame to five, what we're saying is we want every fifth frame. Let's get rid of that for now and bring in our OpenAI API key. And like we also said, we can resize the image in order to reduce our costs. Now I'm being really crude because we could have actually set this up to maintain the original aspect ratios. But what I'm doing is just setting everything to 500 pixels on each dimension, uh, just because it's easy. So next let's get the video frames and we can do this using the CV2 library. And it's really simple. All we have to do is CV2 video capture on the video path. Well, first, if we run this, then we can run this. Great. Now, the way that we want to store these images is in text format within an array. And so what we'll do is while the video is opened, we're going to loop through and extract out each frame. And if a frame is not successfully read, we can stop the loop there. Otherwise, we want to make it a JPEG. And so we'll convert this into base64 encoding, which is into text format. And then we'll make sure that it complies with the UTF-8 standard. And then finally, we append that onto our array. And once that's done, we can release our video. And so if we wanted to take a look at base64 frames at this point, it's now a list of base64 encoded strings that comply with the UTF-8 standard. And each of these strings represents a frame within your image. Brilliant. And we could check how many frames we've got just by doing length of base64 frames. 144. Guys, this is just a five second interlude to say, if you're enjoying the video, then please do like, share, and subscribe to support the channel. Cheers. And so one last thing we can do is display and check the frames within the array ourselves. If we wanted to check the first frame, all we need to do is this. We essentially base64 decode and then UTFA encode the images. And then we enclose that within image and update our display handle. And there's our first frame. But if we wanted to loop through this, would loop through base64 frames and add a short delay between each of the images. Usually there would be 24 frames per second, hence the 0 0.025. And if we run that, as you can see, the video actually plays. Brilliant. Next thing we wanna do is trim the number of frames. We can do this quite easily. With M frame set to five, it just means that it takes every fifth frame starting from the first frame. We can do the same thing again as we did last time, except for this code, we're multiplying the gap by the number of frames. And as you can see, that runs quite well. And we just about missed the splash. That's perfect. All right, we can actually go and construct the prompt. However, before we do that, we're gonna add one more small function, which is resizing the frames. Now, the main thing this function does is takes in the base64 encoded string alongside a resize width and a resize height. And then it leverages some of the libraries that we imported previously to manipulate the strings itself. And the return string represents an image that matches your desired size and width. So let's apply this as we construct the prompt. So if we go to construct the prompt now, first what we need is the text instructions of the prompt itself. 
And so our prompt is, here's every nth frame from a video where n equals five. Please create a compelling explanation of what takes place in the video. Cool, and delete that. And next we're gonna put this in an object so that it matches the format that's required for OpenAI, where you specify the type as text and the text content itself. And in case you're not familiar with this format, you can either check out my previous video on GPT-4 Vision, or you can take a look at the OpenAI documentation where they have numerous examples. They also have an API reference where if you go down to chat and you scroll down a bit, you'll see the image input section where they also have some information about the API. Now for each of the corresponding image entries, the type is image URL and the image URL content has a URL, which is the base64 encoded string. However, here we've also applied the resize image function. And all we're doing is looping through each of the frames in trimmed frames. Brilliant. Now let's combine all of this into a single messages array with the role set to user and the content set to text prompt entry in an array format added to the images entries. Now the remaining parameters that we need to send to the request are the GPT-4 vision preview for the model, the messages which is already defined, and we're also gonna specify a maximum number of output tokens that we wanna use. And we set that to be 500. And now we can finally send off our chat completion. And now we just create a new OpenAI client by specifying our OpenAI API key. And then we create a chat completion request. And then we do client.chat.completions.create and send in our parameters. And we can send that off and print our results straight away. This should only take a moment. So it's actually given us a description of what's happened. The location being mini golf, the attempts at hitting the ball, the walking along the course where we know that was running, the intentional jumping into the water, the splash, the aftermath of the splash being visible. And even the context seems to pick up that it was an unexpected turn of events. There was a humorous stunt while playing mini golf. That's brilliant. And just like that, we turn GPT-4 Vision's API from just seeing and interpreting images to interpreting video frames. If you enjoy the video, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe to support the channel. If there's anything else that you want to see or any thoughts or comments or feedback, let me know in the comment section below. And guys, hope to see you on the next one. Cheers.